Hello, high school basketball fans, and tonight it is Western Buckeye League action lady style, it is, as it is the St. Mary's Lady Riders versus the Ottawa Glendor Lady Titans. I'm Dave Bowen. My color commentator tonight is Dar Nevergall, and we bring St. Mary's with an overall record of six and five. Two and one tied for second in the league with Van Orn Shawnee and Wapak under the direction of Scott Jordan versus, again, the Ottawa Glendorf Lady Titans with a record of 11 and one tied for first with Bath at three and zero in WBL action at this time under the direction of Troy Yant. Dar, some early thoughts on tonight's contest between these two WBL schools. No, well, David, I think we're going to have a really tough matchup, as we usually do when you see WBL teams meet. But the same here team's been up and down a little bit this season, 6-5 overall, like you said, 2-1 and one in the league, where Ottawa Glendorf's on a little bit of a roll, coming in at 11-1, ranked number two in the division. But, you know, you can throw records out the door. Anytime WBL teams get together, you never know what's going to happen. Now, OG's got a little bit of advantage, when I think, on the height side, you know, and maybe a little bit on the scoring side as well, where they're coming in averaging about 53 points a game. But on the flip side, you got a Rough Rider team that's very good on defense, you know, and can hold down some high-scoring games teams. So I, I expect a very good game. I expect a really hard-fought under the boards is where this game's really going to be won. It's going to be exciting to watch tonight, Darn, you're right, for St. Mary's under the direction of Scott Jordan in his first year as head coach after serving six years as a varsity assistant. They average 37 points on offense, give up 36 defensively. The starters, number one, Ella Jacobs, the five foot seven inch senior guard. Number two, Reagan Allemeyer, the five five inch, five foot five inch senior guard. Number four, Sophie Manker, the 5'7", sophomore guard, second in scoring at seven points per game. And then number 14, the leading scorer for St. Mary's, Reese Rabel, the 5'8", junior guard. For Ottawa Glandorf, your starters. Number four, Carson Erfer, the 5'7", senior guard, leads the Lady Titans in scoring at 14 points per game. Carly Brinkman, number five, the junior guard. Number 21, Katie Kaufman, the senior post player, Micah Aldrich, number 24, the senior forward, and Caitlin Kimmett, number 32, the 5'10 junior post player. We get things started here, and Ottawa Glendorf shows that strength inside right away as Carson Erford gets the offensive rebound and the score, and the Lady Titans come out in the 2-2-1 press. Erford with the steal, but the Lady Riders get the steal right back as Sophie Manker Goes coast to coast, off the glass, overcooks it. Here come the Lady Titans, up and down action, tempo. OG wants to play fast. St. Mary's is gonna to wanna to slow it down and turn it into a half court game. They certainly are, and if you look, watch these two teams. You know, like I said, this is gonna be one under the boards, and you've seen already some offensive rebounds by both squads, so you know, that's where you're gonna be banging around a lot. You know, it, their shooting from the outside isn't that bad, but you know, I think really the height advantage that OG's got on the inside, they need those second, you know, opportunities under there. The Lady Riders in the half court set being patient against the OG man-to-man -man defense. Sophie Maker with the basketball goes over to Cadence Hirschfeld. Her shot's off the mark. Here come the Lady Titans in transition. Caitlin Kimmett with the basketball. Swings it out to Micah Aldrich. Back to Kimmett into the post. And Katie Kaufman, the second leading scorer for OG at 12 points per game, picks up her first field goal. OG up four to nothing on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. There's a three-pointer for the Lady Riders. Sophie Maker with a great shot from outside, a quick shot, but it goes down, Dar. Well, Dave, I'll tell you, she's a 46% three-point shooter, so you can't let her open out there. And Carly Brinkman able to get to the rack versus that St. Mary's half-court defense. Something Coach Jordan can't allow to have happen. Got to shore up the defense, got to have some help side. Brinkman, she's a maximum role player, attacks the rim right there, averages nine a game for OG. St. Mary's with the basketball. 
Well, there's a couple adjustments both teams need to do. St. Mary's got to shut up the middle a little bit. OG's got to get out there on the perimeter and keep these guys from shooting from the outside. Cadence Hirschfeld with the basketball deflected and stolen. That's Brinkman again. And inside, Erford with the bucket. Again, quick possessions for OG, and they're making good on them. St. Mary's breaks the press, unable to fight pressure with pressure, but there's penetration. Nice block by Katie Kaufman. And transition again, Erford with the miss. The Riders, they want to run. OG back in transition, but with the three-point look, let it fly, and there's one offensive rebounder, and she gets it, none other than Ella Jacobs. Yeah, they're going to need a lot more of those, though. Particularly, they shoot those outside shots from way out there, and they don't get the bounce way out. Penetration by the Riders, and Reese Rabel, again, the leading scorer with the miss. Here comes Kaufman, passes to Erfer, and she sets up from three, unable to connect. St. Mary's with a good checkout by Rabel. Oh, There's good pass. transition, yes. Ella Jacobs with the two. Cuts the lead to three by OG. Ella Brinkman Jacobs with the basketball. Averaging just under three points a game, so she's goes to her average already. If you're going to have a big night, you want to get hot early. That's you're right. right. Here comes the Riders. Take care of the basketball there against the pressure. Reese Rabel with the basketball. Yeah, St. Mary's very aware of Katie Kaufman underneath the boards for OG. So, you know, it's kind of hard to get the ball inside there when you're looking at that big number 21 out there. Absolutely. She takes up a lot of real estate in there. A couple of deflections, but the ball is going to stay with St. Mary's. Substitution for the Titans, number three, Olivia Unofficially, I got St. Mary's now with two turnovers in this game, which isn't too bad with the pace that this first quarter has been at, you know, as far as getting up and down the court. OG does want to turn you over. They can take a three-point lead and turn it into a ten-point lead in a matter of seconds, and St. Mary's has got to take care of the rock, and you're right, with just two turnovers. And there's a third one, though, and here comes OG. Brinkman with the pass from Erford. Carly Brinkman gets her second field goal, 10-5 in favor of OG. A big possession here early right now for OG, or excuse me, the Lady Riders. You know, St. Mary's averaging almost 16 turnovers a game, so you know that's going to be a big factor in this game with this OG defense, the way it plays. St. Mary's got to be strong with the ball. Four out, one in. Sometimes they have all five players out on the perimeter. Allemeyer setting up the offense. Shot from the corner by Sophie Maker. Overcooks it. Here comes OG again in transition. Down there on the baseline, Liv Grothaus in the game. She travels. So it's a dead ball turnover. OG able to set their full court defense. And they're going to set up in man-to-man -man full court here. And shuffled in a few new players just to keep some fresh legs out there. OG will come at you in waves. St. Mary's goes about seven deep. Reese Rabel with the basketball. St. Mary's would like to get inside, but they're just nowhere to go in there. Exactly. Rabel was looking inside. Almost a turnover, but a violation of kicking the ball. Keeps the ball with St. Mary's. Reagan Allemeyer to trigger it for the Lady Riders. Yeah, they're trying Jacobs to take with it. the basketball, looking for a back cut. Can't get it. They're Here. trying to take advantage of the fact that Kaufman's on the bench right at the moment. Uh-huh. And that, with 153 to go, is our first foul of the game. Rough Rider foul number 14, Reese Rabel, her first team's first. 
Rabel picks up her first foul. And with that first whistle, it's a good time to introduce our officials, Brett Green, Vince Walensky, and Pat McKinnis. At the free throw line for OG, number 14, Savannah Wrecker, the Lee's Famous Recipe free throw line. Lee's Famous Recipe chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Wrecker picks up one free throw, 11 to five. OG on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Steal by OG. And Aldrich picks up the bucket, 13 to five. St. Mary's has got to take care of the rock and get a good look. Double team out there. Right now, it looks like there's more than five white shirts out there if you're a Riders fan. And there's OG's got five players now in scoring column. Good penetration right there by Ashley Nuss off the bench. Unable to come up with the bucket. Ball goes out of bounds. Going to stay with St. Mary's. Again, Reese Rabel to trigger it in. A flex action with the under out of bounds set. Rabel at the wing. OG didn't give up a whole lot when Kaufman went to the bench because they've got Kimmon out there at five foot ten. So they still got a big girl underneath the basket. Double team out front on Maker. And another deflection again. OG Titan defense just swarming Dar. Looks well, like more than five shirts out there if you're St. Mary's Rough Rider. Well, if you're a Rough Rider, and as soon as you get your hands on the ball, you can expect at least two OG players coming at you at the same time. And they're going to trap you out front as far as they can because they want to get those fast break points you know, off those turnovers. Looking at the back cut. Maintain possession off the deflection. But there's a steal. Megan Horseman in the game for OG. And St. Mary's able to steal it back. Sophie Maker with the basketball. Yeah, the Lady Riders, you can't turn your back on the defense. Got to stay facing forward, be strong with the basketball. There's a good back cut. Knight's kiss off the glass doesn't go for Jacobs. And with 30 seconds, here comes OG. See if they settle for one or if they look to attack. Erford with the basketball, the sophomore, leading scorer, 14 points a game. Well, you haven't seen him take too many outside shots, so I... Well, that's one way to get it. But you're right, Dar. It's been a focus of getting the ball inside, either in the half court or off a of transition, take advantage of the height that you have over St. Mary's. Well, now they just brought Kaufman back in. It. So you got a six foot one and a five foot ten underneath the boards for uh, Ottawa Glendorf. So OG going to trigger under out of bounds. 16 seconds remaining on the ultimate. Outdoor scoreboard. Shot goes awry. St. Mary's going to get it off of the deflection. They'll have 12 seconds. 13 to 5 in favor of OG. End of the first quarter. Rabel with the basketball. Rabel doing a nice job of getting it across the center line. There's a shot by Maker. Does it go? And that's going to bring the end of our first quarter to us with Ottawa Glendor jumping out front 13 to 5. You're watching it on WOSN. We want to thank our scoreboard sponsor tonight, Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. Ultimate Outdoor. Dar that first quarter. Again, tempo being a key. St. Mary's trying to do things in the half court. OG just defensively really pressuring the guards, and when they get turnovers, they are looking to attack the basket. Oh, they certainly are, and OG is known for coming out there and trying to trap you out front as much as they can so they can get those easy baskets on the transition. You know, it's going to be a tough night for St. Mary's. You know, there's a nice backdoor right there that got them two points, but it's going to be a really tough night if they can't produce enough underneath the basket. Reagan Allemeyer with the bucket as St. Mary's runs the back door set out of the quarter break. Nicely done. 
And there's a turnover. Good hustle. No, not a turnover as Carly Brinkman gets that ball to Erford. OG maintains possession. Uh, one thing OG's got to be careful of is not to try to force the ball so much on the inside. I know they want to get it inside, but there, you know, there are a couple of blue shirts down there too. Caitlin Kimmett picks up her first bucket of the game. She averages seven a game, the junior post player. Good offensive rebound. And there's a steal. Give it to Micah Aldrich, and she's going to take it in for the bucket. Uh, so, you know, now you've got seven players for OG in the scoring column, and they, they are a team that is very unselfish. They'll spread it out. I mean, they don't care who has the, uh, the best night, you know, as long as we win as a team. Well, Lady Titans in the first basketball poll that has come out, ranked number two in Division Three, And here in the early going, they have done nothing but support that ranking, Dar. Behind number one, Miami East, down by Dayton. Yeah, their only loss has been to 13-1 uh, for the Army team, which is nothing to sneeze at. Absolutely not. The Riders setting the offense. Now they're five out, spreading the OG defense as far as they can, trying to take away help side, looking for one-on-one -on -one driving lanes. Well, you can see the little, little defense that OG likes to pull is, you know, they, they drive it on the inside, but then they have Kaufman shift to the outside quickly. Ashley Nuss with the basket. Give the dime to Reese Rabel. Nice back cut for Nuss to get on the scoreboard. OG with the basketball. It's in Erford's hands. She's going to her left, and it's a steal. Rabel gets her hand in there, and then on the opposite side, Carly Brinkman picks up the personal. That's her first, team's first here of the second quarter. I'll tell you what, Dave, if you watch OG and St. Mary's both on that half-court pass that they got the bucket off of for St. Mary's, when Kaufman shifts out and comes on the outside, that's when St. Mary's is trying to attack on the inside on that back door. And it's worked a couple times for them. Yeah, draw the big away from the basket and then get behind her and make that power shot. Critical for St. Mary's here. And they've taken, you know, they've taken a... A punch by OG. They get a bucket here, get into double figures, cut the lead to six or five with a three, and they're right back in it. Yeah, they just got to be patient. And it's still got three quarters to go here. You know, so you got to be patient if you're St. Mary's. Carly Brinkman oh. with the steal, wow. with the wheel, and with the deal as she scores her first field goal the second uh, quarter. Maximum role players, Cadence Hirschfeld, according to Coach Jordan for St. Mary's. Carly Brinkman, she fits that category for OG. She certainly does, averaging almost nine points a game. She already has six tonight. Yeah, on her way to a possible big night. But you talk about Erford as a leading scorer, Kaufman as a second leading scorer, Caitlin Kimmett. But there's, there's Carly Brinkman. Saw her early, earlier this season against the Crespi Lady Knights. Just a lot of those intangibles. When it's a big possession def defensively, seems like she's involved with it. Gets her hand on the ball, a deflection, makes things happen for this OG squad. It's been on display here in the early going tonight. Well, like I said, the advantage for, co for Coach Ant and his coaching staff is it, they don't seem to lose a, anything when they shuffle girls in and keep fresh legs out there. The girls they bring in pick it up right where they left off. There's that stifling defense again. St. Mary's trying to penetrate against it. Reese Rabel double dribbles the basketball. The only positive, it's a dead ball turnover. The Lady Riders can get back and set their defense. And unofficially, I've got a St. Mary's now over eight turnovers here in this first half. OG swings the ball around. Defense sunk in a little bit. Kimmett with the shot. Doesn't go. Here come the Riders. Swing it across again to Rabel. Back out front to Reagan Allemeyer. St. Mary's needs a basket. Nice entry pass into Jacobs, but just undersized against Kaufman in there. Really working the back cut, which I like that philosophy. 
But there's another turnover against St. Mary's. There's just nowhere to go for him. But there's a turnover right away against OG. And Coach Jordan calls timeout. We'll take a timeout with him. Second quarter action. Halfway through the quarter, 19 to 9, OG. We're pleased to announce new pricing for the WOSN streaming service for only $8 per month. You can watch WOSN from anywhere at any time. Sign up today at app.wsn.tv. Also available on Roku and Apple TV. He's Darn Never Go. I'm Dave Bowen. It's OG in St. Mary's Lady Style WBL action 19 to 9 in favor of OG right now. Coach Jordan takes a timeout. What's he talking to his team about, Dar? Well, for one thing, he's trying to tell him, you know, just calm down. You know, we got a long ways to go in this game. You know, calm down. You know, be patient. You know, work work our offense the way we can. We we know we're up against the challenge when we get down to the other end of the court, but we just got to work our you know fundamentally work what we need need to do, and just play our game. You know, they they're they've held teams to low scores. And a lot of it comes to the fact that you just got to slow down your offense a little bit. Reagan Allemeyer loses the handles. OG looks to take advantage, but again, give St. Mary's credit. Great hustle to get back defensively, and they get the turnover on OG. OG's got to protect the basketball a little bit themselves. Unofficially, I got them for six turnovers themselves. Now, they give up about 14 turnovers a game, so, you know, they've got to protect the basketball. They want to get it on the inside, like I said earlier on. They want to force it in there, and you can't do that time in and time out. you got to be able to hit a couple outside shots to draw the St. Mary's team away from the middle. And so far, OG has not consistently hit any outside shots. St. Mary's with the violation. OG takes it out of bounds. Here comes Carly Brinkman. She gets to the free throw line. She turns it over against St. Mary's defense. Johnny on the spot. But there's a turnover against St. Mary's. So right now... <laughs> I don't know if you like apple or cherry turnovers, but you got your choice, Dar. There's a lot of them going both ways. Give credit to the defenses. It's a little bit like that game hot potato. You know, nobody, <laughs> nobody wants to touch the basketball right now and hang on to yeah. it. Yeah. The basketball is on fire right now. Nobody wants to touch it or maintain it. But with Carly Brinkland, she'll try and get things set up for OG. Aldridge into Kaufman. She doesn't come away with it. And the feisty Riders work it for a jump ball, and it's going to stay here with OG. Yeah, I think both teams want to slow it down. It should slow it down a little bit because right now their passes aren't as crisp as they should be. You know, you can't just lack a days. You'll think you can throw it into somebody because both teams are really hot on this, on the spot right now. Got to see what you see, right? That St. Mary's two-three zone defense again. It works there. As you said, they got to see what's there. OG turns it over. Here come the Riders. Well, switching, going to the 2 3 zone has been very beneficial for St. Mary's because they know that OG hasn't taken that many outside shots. St. Mary's with the basketball again. Well coached teams, they put it down in the hip, low ball. And then they go over the top if they need to, but nicely done here. Looking to find a teammate. Nicely done. Good penetration via the pass. Inside out action. A good look for Reagan Allemeyer. Doesn't go. OG in transition. Looking on the backside. Oh, man. Nicely done. Give the bucket to Caitlin Kimmick. Give the assist to. Micah Aldrich. Great vision by Aldrich just to see Kimmett cutting across there wide open. Extends the lead. 21-19 OG on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. It's been an 8-4 second quarter, or 8 to 3. Yeah, 8 to 4 second quarter for OG now. Ella Jacobs called for traveling. I like it the way she catches the basketball, gets it in low ball position. And she's done a really good job with that all night long. But on that particular catch, she did switch her pivot foot. The official right there on the spot. Dead ball turnover. OG with the basketball. And Carly Brickman out front. 
Well, it's really been hard for either team to get any kind of momentum going, you know, or any consistency with the number of turnovers that we've seen in this game. Yeah, you know, it's been jagged, hasn't it? it there hasn't been has. a whole lot of flow to the game. The hoop and the harm as Katie Kaufman is able to get into the paint, draw the personal foul on Sierra Graber. That's her first foul, and that's only St. Mary's first foul in the second quarter. So Katie Kaufman, she's going to go to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line again. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphi, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all of your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. Kaufman with the free throw. 24-9, OG. The Lady Riders in need of a bucket. Good inside out action again. The shot there by Maker, she overcooks it. OG. Again, that's OG's defense support her because as soon as she caught the ball to shoot it, she worried about somebody coming out on her and she threw it a little bit too quick. Inside to Kaufman, she's triple team, but looks to attack, doesn't get it. And going after her own miss, she picks up the personal foul. That's Katie's first foul of the game. With all the action that you've seen underneath, Dave, her first foul, that's pretty amazing, actually. You know, because there have been a lot of banging around inside. WBL action at its finest. No place for the weak of heart in and there. And absolutely not. A lot of hands movement around and everything else. And for her to have just one foul, that's pretty good. Sophie Baker brings it across the timeline. There's penetration by Cadence Hirschfeld. She's able to get her shoulders around the defender and picks up the personal. Tight foul number three, Grothaus for a second, team's fourth. Liv Grothaus picks up her second personal foul. 31 seconds again. Four points in the quarter thus far for the Lady Riders, 11 for OG. 30 seconds to go. St. Mary's needs something to take into halftime on a positive. A bucket on this possession would go a long way in making that happen. Jacobs again, head up. Nice back cut pass. Rabel with the basketball, but there's a deflection and a steal. It's Brinkman. She goes L.A. to Boston, coast to coast with the steal, with the bucket, and that's going to take us to halftime. Your halftime score on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Ottawa Glandor, 26. St. Mary's, 9. We'll be back with some halftime thoughts and statistics. You're watching it all on WOSN. Welcome back to Ottawa Glendorf High School, the Robert J. Hermiller Gymnasium. It's WBL action, lady style. St. Mary's Lady Riders versus the OG Lady Titans. It's halftime. OG up 26 to 9. Dar some statistics and halftime thoughts concerning both these clubs as we get ready to start the third quarter. Well, shooting-wise, when you look at the uh, St. Mary's Rough Riders, they're just four for 17 from the field with 24%. Just one for four from three-point range for 25%. Seven rebounds for them, but 14 big turnovers for them as well. OG on the flip side, 12 for 20 on the inside at 60%. 12 for 21 overall at 57%. 0 for 1 from three-point range. One for two at the foul line, 50%. Ten rebounds and eight turnovers for them. And I tell you, Dave, the big thing when it comes to the second half here is both teams, OG's got to start shooting a couple on the outside. they got to free up some girls on the inside. You know, St. Mary's has got to make the big adjustments. You know, they've got to, they got to pull the trigger a little quicker, I think. When they get an open on the outside, and I realize, you know, they're, they, when they catch the ball on the outside, all they can anticipate is two OG people coming at yep, them at the same yep. time. But you've got to pull the trigger a little bit on the outside because getting it inside is a luxury. They've got a couple of backdoor plays on the inside. 
but that's a luxury, and that's not going to continue over all throughout the rest of the game. For Coach Ant and his crew, he's telling his girls basically, you know, we're we got we're getting turnovers from them, but we can't turn around and give it right back to them again. I mean, you know, we got to be a little more, you know, possession-wise when we get the ball too. So we need to sew that up a little bit because again, as we go on through the rest of the season, that's not going to play out. You're not going to turn the ball over to good teams and get, you know, be able to continue to do that. So OG needs to hang on to the ball, build some momentum. You know, they're up 26 to nine. You know, people say, well, what kind of momentum can you build? But consistency, that's a big thing. You know, you can't give it back after you take it away from somebody. Outstanding half court analysis from one. Dar never gall. Our starters will be out on the floor for both squads to begin the third quarter. And I agree with you. Uh, 14 turnovers for St. Mary's, eight for OG in the first half. But OG, they they haven't seen what's there on that transition. They've been a little impatient uh, in that transition when they've gotten a turnover. St. Mary's has been able to get back defensively and be in the right position to turn OG over as well. So we start the third quarter here. St. Mary's looking to get a little more movement in their offense. I like the look here to begin the third quarter. Instead of standing on the perimeter, everybody is cutting and moving. Jacobs with the basketball inside, going against the bigs, nice kick out. Had an open look possibly right there for Maker. She doesn't shoot it, but her teammate, one Reagan Allemeyer does. Unable to connect and it's going to be OG basketball. But that possession right there offensively, St. Mary's really snapped the basketball. Good ball movement. Oh, excellent ball movement. Very fundamental ball movement as well, you know. And when she got the shot on the outside, she pulled the trigger right off the bat. She didn't wait for the OG player to recover. She put it up there. Now, she missed the shot, but that's a good shot to take right there. Shot it with confidence. You're right. Cadence Harshfield with the Hirschfeld with the uh, turnover there against OG. So, as we said, Coach Yant probably addressed those turnovers in the first possession. OG gives it right back to St. Mary's. St. Mary's basketball. Seven and change here left in the third quarter on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Again, St. Mary's trying to run a nice half-court offense, and they've got to be very patient with it, you know, if they want to get back into this game. Yeah, again, everybody looking to move, but the OG defense there stepping up. Nice steal. Give it to number 13, Megan Horseman in the game. OG in the half court. Brinkman with the basketball. And there's another turnover. So two possessions for OG, two turnovers. Nice ball movement, nice pass, good finish. Move over William Shakespeare. That was poetry in motion as you give the basket to Cadence Hirschfeld, her first bucket of the game. And we've got a jump ball, going to stay with OG. But what we were talking about with St. Mary's pulling the trigger, OG didn't pull the trigger on the shot there. And I think she had an open you know, look. She got a little hesitant with it and tried to pass it off, and St. Mary's took the ball away from him. Herford with the basketball off the inbound. Back out front then to Megan Horseman, who's in the game now. There's a nice up fake and drive by Wrecker. It doesn't go. Offensive rebound, though. Number 21, Katie Kaufman picks up her sixth and seventh point of the game. Well, that's an advantage that OG has. If you, want to, if you do have an opportunity to shoot it, you know, you've got Katie Kaufman underneath there to clean it up for you. St. Mary's in the half-court offense. There's another deflection and a steal. Give the steal to Savannah Recker. And Reagan Allemeyer picks up her first personal foul, being aggressive there off the turnover. Does create a dead ball situation. OG's defense is doing a couple things. For one thing is they're shutting down that inside very effectively, but also when St. Mary's does get it on the outside like that, they're fighting, you know, OG's been able to fight out there and get somebody out there. You know, St. Mary's hasn't been able to screen anybody off there to get an open look. OG with the basketball, moving it around the perimeter. 
Herford being boxed in one Kaufman. right now. Kaufman for two. And Kaufman gets the bucket. Her second of the quarter knocked the defender down, helped her up. Good sportsmanship right there. St. Mary's now with the basketball. Kaufman now with nine. Oh, nice floater. Yes, excellent field goal right there. Caden Hirschfeld with the bucket. Hirschfeld with all four points now for St. Mary's here in the second half so far. Shot on the perimeter by Horseman. She overcooks it. Here comes St. Mary's. And again, you get over there by the sideline, and that acts as a defender as well. Cadence Hirschfeld gets turned over right there. The ball goes out of bounds off her hand. OG with the basketball, you know. I think Coach Jordan, he, he's got to be fairly pleased with how his team's playing defensively. Just offensively, they have not been able to get things going with any consistency. Down 17 now, almost halfway through the third quarter. Yeah, and, and like you said, Dave, you don't want to get caught on that sideline because OG will trap you on there, and there is no place to go. Erford attacks the middle of the key. Nissens comes up with her own rebound, gets fouled on the ensuing shot. She'll go to the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. She's an 81% free throw shooter. Cadence Hurst foul picks up her first personal foul. As you said, 81% free throw shooter. Carson Erford misses that one. Leading free throw shooter on this Lady Titan squad. Leading score for OG with only four points at this point in the game. As we said, the last couple of possessions, St. Mary's has been going with a box and one on her. But she picks up the second of two free throws on the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. OG with the basketball. Jacobs again on the elbow. Low, puts the ball in low ball position. Takes a shot from 17. Miss offensive rebound by Graber. Kicks it out to her teammate, number 12. Nuss with the miss. Good hustle all around. Goes out of bounds. It'll stay with St. Mary's. Both teams playing very, very aggressive defense. And you got to give them all the credit in the world for that. And St. Mary's really did make some nice adjustments at halftime because they're playing a much better half-court offense, not rushing the shots as much, you know, and taking their opportunities when they get on the outside, which is good to see. Hopefully they can reward themselves with a couple buckets here, fight their way back into this game a little bit. Down 18. Penetration, going with the nice reverse job. layup. Nicely done by Sophie Maker. She's one of, if not the most improved player on this squad for St. Mary's from last year to this year. They've all improved, but she's shown some drastic improvement for Coach Jordan. He's been very pleased with her play. She gets the field goal right there. Great decision. Yeah, she's been a nice job of driving that baseline and reversing it. Good defense again displayed by St. Mary's. Ball goes out of bounds on the deflection. It'll stay with OG. Caitlin Kimmett to trigger it in. Goes to Brinkman. Nobody guard her. She said, I'll take that three. With the offensive rebound, Grothaus, she attacks the rack, draws contact, and will go to the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. Right, her foul number four, Sophia Maker, her first. Maker picks up the third. personal, her first. Grothaus Again, Lynn Grothaus at the free throw line shooting two. Second leading free throw shooter on this Lady Titan squad at 75%. The Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, located in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. She goes two for two. Picks up her first points of the contest. Maker with the basketball. Stingy OG defense. Deflection right there on the first pass, Dar. Making it tough on every catch. Well, every pass that you throw, if it's above waist level, it's going to be contested by this OG team, and they got such quick arms, you know, or quickness and long arms that they're going to, you know, take that away from you. 
St. Mary's has combated that a little bit by having good ball movement here in the third quarter right there. Rabel looks to get on the scoreboard. The leading score has not done it at thus far for St. Mary's, unable to do so. That's going to be Kimmett from deep. She doesn't score, but her teammates look to clean it up. First, it is Liv Grothaus. She misses. And then Katie Kaufman. She goes to the basket and misses, but draws the foul on OG, or excuse me, St. Mary's. So Katie Kaufman at the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Free Throw Line. She drills the first one. Kaufman, a 52% free throw shooter, second leading scorer at 12 points. And Coach Jordan, he's going to take a timeout. We'll take a timeout with him. It's OG 34, St. Mary's 15, and you're watching it all on WOSN. The WOSN Scores app is new and approved. Download, download the brand new app from your app store so you don't miss any of your favorite team scores. The new WOSN app replaces the old app, so make sure you download it today and stay up to date on all the scores. Dark, that last possession, St. Mary's in their defense, but OG able to play a little bit of volleyball on the back backboard and... Kaufman ends up on the free throw line. Yeah, I got a feeling that OG's going to find themselves on the free throw line a lot here in the second half. St. Mary's just trying to get it back into the scheme eh? somewhat, you know. And they're, and they're calling a little closer, I think, here in the second half than they did in the first half as well. Kaufman goes two for two from the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. St. Mary's back in their half-court offense. Jacobs gets the ball in the elbow, does a good job of being a nice point guard move. for that position. Yeah, nice move there again by Maker. Comes up empty, and OG turns it over in transition. St. Mary's, all five girls back. Good hustle defensively to get back in position. OG tosses it out of bounds, and OG's backing off the pressure as well. Dar going to pick him up at half court. Carly Brinkman on Maker. OG with three turnovers here in this second half so far here in the third quarter. Gives them 11 on the game. Baker looking to get into the paint. Goes with a running one-hander. Unable to score. Aldrich with the rebound. Aldrich into Kaufman. There's another turnover. No room underneath there for Kaufman to maneuver. Nicely done. They can't come away with the bucket, but good. Transition offense, everything but the score for St. Mary's. Erford with the basketball. As we said, she hasn't really hit the scoring column a oh. whole lot. She's going to look to attack right there. Picks up the personal foul against St. Mary's. I believe that's on number one, Ella Jacobs. And Carson Erford going to go to Jacobs the Lee's Erford. Famous Recipe Chicken Free Throw Line. Home style happens here. Erford shooting two. Misses the first one. So one for three. The 81% free throw shooter. Not having her best game tonight. But again, when you have a complement of players, somebody else will step up. Somebody else will definitely step up. And Erford misses the second as well. Here comes St. Mary's in transition, looking to get the ball down on the block quickly. They do so. Nice intestinal fortitude there by Reese Rabel, but she's unable to come up with the bucket. OG in transition. Well, St. Mary's is definitely not getting any offensive rebounds to go to get a second shot at the basket either. Here comes St. Mary's again, but again, good hustle by Savannah Wrecker for OG. Deflects it out of bounds, you know. Teams track those deflections. Not oh, necessarily yeah. a turnover there, but a deflection. It's just like a mosquito bothering you all the time. You can't kill it. Those deflections add up and it aggravates you, and that's what OG has done tonight a lot with their defense. And it just disrupts a team. You know, anytime they're trying to get any kind of, you know, fast break going of any kind, you know, it just disrupts that. Kaufman with the steal. Erford with the left, unable to connect. Again, St. Mary's does a great job of getting back to contest it. And it's another turnover on the Lady Titans. Yeah. 
20 <laughs> point lead right now for St. Mary's Dark. I tell you, it's 35 15 on there, but this has been a really sloppy game. And I know both these coaches are going to be frustrated. You know, they got a lot of things they want to work on next week, I'm sure. Rabel looking to attack, unable to get the shot deflected. But there's her teammate, Ella Jacobs, able to clean it up. 14 seconds in the third quarter. That's one of the few offensive rebounds we've seen St. Mary's get tonight, too. Aldrich with the basketball. Good attack to the rim. Doesn't go for Megan Horseman. And the next shot is after the buzzer. So after three complete, Otto Glendorf 35, St. Mary's 17. After three quarters, OG 35, St. Mary's 17, a nine to eight quarter. OG has won every quarter, Dar, but even though it was sloppy, Coach Jordan's got to be happy with how his squad came out in the third quarter and just played possession by possession. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they have battled all night long. You cannot, you know, take that away from them. You know, they're down 35-17, but it's not from lack of effort, that's for sure. This yeah, they are. same uh, team has really been hammering away. You know, they're just a little outmatched right at the moment, and they haven't been able to get any flow of the game or any rhythm going, but... You know, they are fighting hard out there. Couldn't agree with you more. Undersized, but again, continuing to work hard. They're going to be able to take something from this game, regardless of what the final score is, to help them be better in their next contest, which is against Van Wert at home next Thursday. Inbound play. Rabel with the shot. The leading score again. Still hasn't dented the scoring column for the Riders. Unable to do so there. OG with the basketball. Again, Coach Yant subbing liberally throughout the game. And right now he's got several players that started on the bench in the game. Keeping players fresh. Well, that's one thing you know, It's going to be a plus for OG down the road is keeping players in there all the time that have fresh legs. Sophie Manker gets into the middle of the paint and is able to convert, and that's been a tough place all night for St. Mary's to score, but she does a great job of it right there. Yeah, that's seven points now for uh, Minker, and you know, and like you said, Dave, it's been, you know, cherished ground underneath there for St. Mary's. They've just not been able to get in there like that. But every time, it seems like every time Kaufman goes up to the bench, you know, they want to exploit that and take advantage of it, and they've been able to do that a few times, but, you know, not consistently enough. OG with the basketball. They go inside to Brinkman. Nice deflection there by St. Mary's on the shot. OG, OG maintains possession. Yeah, I've got 19 turnovers unofficially for St. Mary's in this game. And, you know, on the flip side, 13 turnovers for Ottawa Blandorf. From three-point range, Caitlin Kimmett, nothing but cotton. Pushes the lead back up to 19 for OG. That's seven points now for Caitlin. Ball deflected, goes out of bounds, so it'll stay with St. Mary's. You need to shoot a couple more of those three-pointers. Yeah, loosen up that defense. Why change if, you, if they're not scoring from out there? Here she comes. Kimmett attacks the rim, doesn't get it. Again, St. Mary's recovers, gets back on defense. Oh. Graber with the rebound. Good hustle by Carly Bringman on that one. Can clear across from about the foul line and slap that ball out of bounds. Yeah, she's just around the ball all the time, Carly Brinkman. Great nose for it. Good deflection, stops the transition for St. Mary's. I'll tell you, the St. Mary's team is going to have a decent season. they they got some good-looking ball players out there that really, you know, they're not afraid to challenge on the inside. They've just been outmanned a little bit. Kaufman goes coast to coast and scores it. And I I really love their mentality. They're nonverbals. They're down 21 points here, but they are playing very hard with purpose, 
and there's no negative nonverbals out there whatsoever. Oh, no, not at all. Here comes OG again. And right there, transition offense. Carly Brinkman with the bucket. Give the assist to Liv Grothaus. That's Brinkman's 10th point of the night. First basket of the second half. And St. Mary's, again, they hustled back, but that's one of the times. It hasn't happened very often, but that's one of the times they just weren't able to get in position quickly enough. OG was able to exploit the transition there and get the bucket. And off the miss free throw on the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. It's a held ball, and it'll stay with OG. 5.44 to go in our fourth quarter on our ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Into the corner, and that's a three-pointer. Give that to Savannah Recker, her first field goal, fourth point overall. 39% three-point shooter. And St. Mary's comes right back. Reagan Allemeyer draws contact. The foul's going to be on Katie Kaufman. That's her second. And this, according to my scorebook, these are the first free throws on the league's famous recipe chicken free throw line for the St. Mary's Rough Riders. You are correct. Our scoreboard sponsor, Ultimate Outdoor, being a resort-style living. Bring resort-style living to your backyard yard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. And... Alamire goes one for two on the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. Full court pressure by St. Mary's. Opens you up to transition, vulnerable to it. And OG does what OG does. Madison McKee in the game. She picks up the field goal. Her first basket of the night. One thing OG's going to have to clean up here, though, is their free throw shooting is only five for nine here in the second half. Shot from the corner by Al Alemeyer, doesn't go. Ella Jacobs, though, with the offensive rebound. Give her the bucket. Right back comes OG. Erford with a look from three, doesn't go. And we're going to have an over-the-back foul called on Savannah Recker. Good hustle. But she commits the personal. We mentioned that St. Mary's will next be in action on Thursday, a week from today, against Van Wert. OG, they will go on the road to play at Smithville in a tournament this weekend on Sunday. Martin Luther King weekend. A lot of tournaments and showcases occurring throughout the state. Ashley Nuss gets into the paint, unable to connect over the height of OG. OG with 25 rebounds unofficially to just 15 from St. Mary's in this game. There's a held ball tie up and it's gonna go St. Mary's way. So that'll be a turnover on OG as a result. Turnover number 14, which is now at their average for the, for the season. Yeah, I think Coach Yant, he's going to break the film down a little bit, and they're going to look at the turnovers they've had. And, uh, again, there's, there's turnovers that you can live with and some that you just need to address and take better care of the basketball. And I think more of them than not have been in that way, shape, and form and fashion for OG today. <laughs> nice block there by Jacobs. But OG comes right back, misses again. Jacobs staying tough. She gets the rebound. St. Mary's in transition. Rabel looking to get on the board, still unable to do so. And they just can't buy that basket when they need it. I think you're right, David. I mean, uh, turnovers, you expect turnovers. I mean, you know, you know, they're averaging about 14 a game. But the turnovers in this game have been, an, if you could say, untimely, inopportune times, whatever you want to call it, because they've stopped momentum that OG was building up. You know, they get a turnover from St. Mary's, they get a, you know, break down the court. 
looks like they're going to be able to convert it and they turn it back over. Those are the kind of turnovers that will drive you crazy if you're a coach. Yeah, yeah. as a coach, I was just going to say, you want to, tell your, you want to reward yourself, ladies. You're doing a good job on defense, but then, in our opinion, you're handing it back to them. But you got to give St. Mary's credit. They have transitioned back off of those turnovers very well tonight. Yeah, they've gotten back very quickly. You know, so Coach Jordan's got a lot of things that he can be pleased about. The outcome of the game isn't going to be one of them, but the way his girls have played tonight. Under three minutes left in the fourth quarter. Would you content to now spread it out a little bit, kind of slow it down? And there's a shot that doesn't go because of the block by Savannah Wrecker with the shot. St. Mary's with the basketball. Here they come. Nice transition. And yeah, number 15, Chloe Ott. Ball fakes, but shuffles the puppies in the process. And that's a travel. That's another turnover on St. Mary's. Chloe Ott, Ott uh, Jr., 6'1". Average about just over a point a game. Getting an opportunity here to get into the game. And this is important minutes for those players that come in off the bench to show their coach, respected coaches that they deserve more playing time and will you know, continue to work and reward themselves for the effort that they put forth in practice. Ball Held ball, Titans. it's gonna stay with OG. When you look at the, the plus columns, and they've all been in OG's favor as far as tonight. They've, they've got more shots at the basket, they've got more rebounds, less turnovers. But, you know, St. Mary's has definitely battled their way. They sure have. And right there, Cadence Hirschfeld looks to attack, can't get it, but kicks it out. The ball ends up in the hands of Reagan Allemeyer, and she hits the three. And with that, Scott Jordan takes the timeout, and we'll take a timeout as well. Caden Hirschfeld takes us to the timeout with a three-pointer for St. Mary's. OG with the basketball now. Another deflection goes out of bounds, but we'll stay with OG. I'll tell you, Dave, the way this game started out, you thought that OG was going to just run these guys right out of the court. And, and even though they have a 22-point lead, it's not really been that case. You know, St. Mary's has fought hard. They stayed in the game. They kept their head in the game, which a lot of teams Again, the plays against this kind of pressure defense that OG puts out there don't keep their heads in the game. They lose it right off the bat. Yeah, and, and Coach Jordan's got to feel good about how his team adjusted at halftime, especially in the half-court offense. In the first half, they were dribbling with their back to the basket and the defender in the way. The second half, they have faced up. They have passed the ball well. It hasn't stuck. Uh, they've moved the ball around. Uh, no, the scoreboard doesn't show the reward of that tonight, but that will pay dividends oh, it will down the road. Definitely pay dividends down the road. There's Hirschfeld again, and yep. she gets it to roll. That's her sixth point of the game. All in the second half for that young lady. One minute remaining in our basketball game. Again, both teams still working very, very hard, taking care of the basketball, good defense. And there's a nice shot by Madison McKee. She picks up her second field goal. Got it there inside the paint. Good patience. Picked up the rim, focused on that rim, stuck it in the basket. Chloe Ott kicks it out. She's got it back in her hands. Tries to go to her teammate, Cadence Hirschfeld, and it goes off her hands. Tough turnover right there, just didn't connect. Now, a lot of a lot of new faces out there on the court right now, and a lot of girls getting a chance to play that don't get a whole lot of minutes starting out. OG again, the number two team in Division Three in the state of Ohio in the first girls' poll. 
Maybe not the cleanest game that they've had all year long, but you got to give credit to St. Mary's with a lot of that. Your final score on the on the Alderman Outdoor scoreboard, 49 to 27. We'll come back after this break to wrap it up with statistics and some final thoughts from Dar Nemergal myself. We're going to break right now. You're watching it on WOSN. Welcome back to Ottawa Glendorf High School, where tonight the OG Lady Titans improved to 12 and 1, 4 and 0 in the WBL by defeating the St. Mary's Lady Riders, 49 to 27. St. Mary's drops to 6 and 6, 2 and 2 overall. Some final look, a final look at the stats, Dar, and some thoughts. Well, we're going to look at the biggest stats that really hit out there was the turnover for. St. Mary's had 23 turnovers unofficially for them, you know, but on the flip side, 15 turnovers for OG as well. So 38 turnovers in this game, and that really killed a lot of momentum any team or flow of the game either team had going on for them. You know, of course, Otto Glendorf won the rebounding. They rebounded and out-rebounded St. Mary's as well. St. Mary's picked it up in the second half, I think, Dave, a lot better, like we said, than the first half. You know, they stayed pretty even with OG in the second half. I think both coaches can go away with some takeaways, some positives and negatives for this team. Now, OG's got a tough one coming up this weekend when they got to play in that tournament out there. Much tougher competition coming up, I'm sure. So, Coach Yant's got a few things he's going to be working on, I'm sure, for this girls. Is you know, we can't afford to do what we did tonight and still mean you know and beat some of these other teams. You know, we came in here, we played the game basically to what the competition was tonight for us. That's not going to be the case next time, next time around. So St. Mary's on the flip side, you know, I really like the intensity the girls had. I like the way they came out in the second half and just stayed with it, you know, against some odds, you know, that were not in their favor. You know, they were out-rebounded. They were out-muscled, a lot of it, you know, but they stuck with it, and they really showed a, a different side to them in, in the second half. You know, Dar, one area that we didn't talk about where the math isn't mathing tonight, the leading scores for both squads held in check. Reese Rabel unable to de dent the scoring column for St. Mary's. She leads that squad at 10 points per game. And Carson Erford, she only had five points, and she leads the Lady Titans at 14. And you're right, OG, they're going to play Smith Smithville at Berlin Highland in the Classic in the country this weekend. I don't know. Maybe they were peeking ahead a little bit, but you can't do that when you're playing WBL basketball. And St. Mary's made this one a tough night, no flow. No, they came up short on the scoreboard. But again, Coach Jordan and his squad, they can take some things from this contest. Certainly can. So we want to thank you for watching this evening. We want to thank Jacob O'Neill, who was our cameraman tonight. He'll take this back to the station and edit it. For Dar Nevergal, I'm Dave Bowen. Thank you for watching the game tonight. And until next time, may all of your jumpers hit nothing but the bottom of the net. So long, everybody.